so I'm selling. Hello. I'm just going to weigh in on the debate on Deli Bichero because apparently Wednesday have turned down a bid of half a million pounds from Blackpool. Now the debate is raging about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Half a million pounds is a lot of money. And with Wednesday's FFP record, half a million pounds is probably even more money than it would be at another club. Right decision, wrong decision. I think it's right decision at this time. And I'll, I'll tell you why. And there's three reasons why I think it's right decision. Firstly, is depth. Now, I've talked in another video about Darren Moore. He will play his 3 5 2. That's how he'll start the season. I've got no doubt that's how he'll start the majority of games. But even if he changes it within a game, it will always have a three man central midfield. He seems to be the first manager for six years or whatever it is to understand that to get the best out of Barry Bannon you really need to play him in a three and it lets him advance up the pitch and do the work he does best in the opposition's half of the pitch. He can cause teams problems with his intricate passing and his threaded through all balls and that's where you want him. And a, a three-man midfield gives him the scope to go and do that. So whether it's a, a back five and a three at the back or a four five one whatever it is it will be a three-man midfield now to play a three-man midfield you've got to have the players and you've got to have the depth now i don't think anyone's going to argue that next season the the starting midfield three will be Byers, volks and bannon i think everybody would agree with that but you're only ever an injury away from getting in trouble and if you've got three men in the midfield playing every week week in week out for my money, you need five or six players going for those spots. Now, it's frustrating for those that are in the side, but injuries soon rack up. Look at last season, Luongo. Large spells out of the side that, that really hampered us, actually, because he played well when he did play, but he was out of the side for a long time. I think Byers at the beginning of the season missed six or seven games. He'd got an injury. Adenaran, another good player who started the season well, he missed, what, 15 games, something like that? You've got to have the depth in that middle of the park. Those those three spaces. Yes, we all know who's probably going to start, but you can't take anything for granted. Suspensions build up, yellow cards, this and other. You've got to have five or six there vying for those spots. And you've got to have someone who's ready to step in. Now, the argument is for half a million pounds, you could let him go, bank some money and probably get another free transfer in who could come in and do a job. But at 21, he's a player who's got that potential. He makes mistakes, of course he makes mistakes. Sometimes he's a bit sloppy in his passing, but I think the other bonus is because we play this three in the middle, you can put a player in there who's a bit younger, a bit more inexperienced, and he's got those other two around him to help him along through a game. And he's got great potential. You know, half a million pounds is a lot of money, but he's 21 years old. We've seen in flashes what he can do. Now, yes, he's not the finished article, and yes, he can frustrate him. Sometimes his passing is sloppy. Sometimes he always wants to go on one of those long busting runs, you know, when defenders are coming off him like skittles, and you don't always have to do that in football. Sometimes the best way to take opposition out of the game is to play a simple wall pass. And I think, you know, he needs to get that side of it in his head that because of his physicality, I think sometimes it's too easy for him to just go off and do that side of it. And I think, you know, he's going to understand that his brain is as big a weapon as his shoulders. And I'm sure Darren Moore and Jamie Smith are trying to get that into him. Now, players progress at different levels, don't they? You know, sometimes, and you'll you'll have seen them yourselves, you might get a player, 26, 27, journeyman player who's never really done anything, and then suddenly hit a bit of form, and the last four to five years is like a purple patch, and I think that is when players, when they suddenly click the light bulb moment, and they suddenly get it, they suddenly get the game, and they suddenly understand the game. Now, Players progress at different speeds, but this is a lad who's still only 21, so there's plenty of time for him to get the game. There's plenty of time for him to have that light bulb moment. And if he does have that light bulb moment, if he does twig it, then it'll be worth a hell of a lot more than half a million pounds. Now, Darren Moore and Jamie Smith will be seeing him every day on the training park, and they will know if he's picking things up. They will know if he's learning. They will know if he's taking on information and retaining that information. So the potential he's got at 21, by the end of next season, it could be worth a million pound or two million pound. 
how many games is he going to play? Who knows? But look at the injuries we had last season. Somebody's got to step in. It only takes an injury this season. This lad might have to step in and play 20, 30 games. The other side of it is as well, the, probably the other point I wanted to make is that if he's not progressing the way they want him to this season, we've got this Reese James in, haven't we, from Blackpool. Left back, left winger, can play in the middle of the park. Now, if he comes in and he's playing brilliantly, and Dan and Moore starts thinking, you know, actually, maybe we could do with him full time. If Del Bichero isn't progressing the way that they hope he would do this season, then maybe in January we could go back to Blackpool and say, all right, well, you know what, if you're still interested, we'll take the half a million and throw in Reese James and you can have him. That's another possibility, so keep hold of him and he might be a useful bargaining chip later down the line if things aren't working out in the, the way we'd hoped and he's not progressing in the way that we'd hoped. So that that's the sort of reasons I'm looking at. We need that depth in midfield, can be used as a bargaining chip later, and, and the most importantly, the potential he's got is huge. I mean, if he came in this season, just for example, and he had to play 20 or 30 games, and really played his way into the side and started gaining that experience, what would it be worth next season? More than £500,000, I'd, I'd wager that. The other side of that argument, of course, is though, if you're going to set to a kid... We've had a bid from a championship club. We've turned down half a million pounds. I think you've then got to be fair and say, your contract's up, we'll give you a new contract worth what an half a million pound player's worth. Because I think if you're going to turn down that sort of money from a club at a higher level, I think you've then got to be fair to the player and say, we think you're worth a million pound, we're going to have to pay you as you want. Pay you as well. So how much would it be worth if we offered him a new deal, a two or three year deal, which I think we should, how much will it be worth then at the end of the season? When he's, he's tied down for two years and he's been playing well. It's all if, buts and maybes, but when you've got a player with potential like that, don't let him go for cheap. I mean, look at them like that road. They'd never sell their kids for outless than a million pound. Any of them, ever. They always get a couple of million. Us, whether it's homegrown or whether it's a, a youth player we've brought in from another club and then we sell them on, we always get undercut. We always get done. I mean, even Antonio, we get him in, we make a bit of profit, he goes to Forest. But what, Forest, they have a year and a half out of him? And because for an absolute king's ransom to West Ham, they make, a, they make a killing on it. It's about time we started looking after ourselves and saying, no, no, you want him, you're going to have to pay well the odds. I know there's the argument that Wednesday don't sell enough players, but at his age, there's plenty of potential time to sell him in the future. You know, he could have, if he looks after himself, he's probably got another 15 years in the game. So I'd keep him in. Obviously, he's probably going to play in the Cup. He'll, he'll play in the Carabao Cup, no doubt about that. He'll play in the FA Cup. And with injuries, suspensions and everything else, he will get a chance in the, the first 11 in the league this season. And if he takes that chance, and like I said, with two experienced players in there with him, helping him through, I think there's every chance this could be the season when he really kicks on. And if he does, you've got a great player or you've got a great profit, either way. So, whilst I can understand people saying his contract's up, half a million pounds is a lot of money, I can understand that, bank it, get somebody in on a free, and I get that totally. But with the potential, I think it's worth turning him down to a new deal, rejecting that bid and, you know, knob off Blackpool, uh, because the potential's there. And he's shown in flashes already. And I don't think, and this is the key thing, I don't think Dad and Moore would have turned down that bid if he wasn't seeing the improvement. If he wasn't seeing in training, oh yeah, this kid's picking it up, he's getting the messages. He's learning bit by bit. I'm playing, you know, training every day with a player like Barry Bannon, I'm sure he, he is picking bits up. So, half a million pound, turned down, for me, right decision. Heartburn. Oh,